welcome to this edition of Chalk Talk, a show that highlights all the great events going on in St. Tammany Parish Public Schools. I'm Melody Swang. We've got an exciting show for you today that includes some special school events and some award-winning teachers and principals. But first, let's begin with a special send-off to Cheryl Araby, who retired from her position as Assistant Superintendent of Curriculum and Instruction in December. Cheryl Araby has had many roles throughout her life. Daughter, wife, mother, friend, teacher, assistant principal, principal, grandmother, supervisor, and assistant superintendent. Each of these roles has shaped her and made her who she is today. And that in turn has given those who know her and love her, and those who have worked for her, the deepest admiration, love, and respect for this remarkably talented woman. Cheryl is a, a, a true educator. When you think about an educator, she is a true educator. As a leader, she's just been fabulous, I think, because she's such a great listener. She truly listens, and she truly has the children at heart. She's not afraid to have the difficult conversations. She'll, she, sometimes she knows maybe one of us need to do something, and she'll say, no, I'll do that. Let me do that. The thing about Cheryl is she follows up. So if she says she's going to do something, she does it. She's just an all-around good person, a great friend to me, but she becomes a friend to everybody she works with, everybody she is in charge of. I just truly admire her commitment to her family and how she can balance things. I know she's got a mom that she cares deeply and loves and spends a lot of time with. You know, she's got a great husband, Greg's a great guy, and um, certainly he spends a lot of time supporting her and what she's doing at work. I know Cheryl's whole family is at her house every Sunday for dinner and after church. She's a great family person. Her family means the world to her. They hold her heart. And this strong sense of family has shaped her, defined her, and made her who she is today. My parents always believed that you could accomplish whatever you set your mind to. For the first three or four years of my being in elementary school, I was in the group of students who couldn't read. So my dad was given that task to work with me, and it was Alice and Jerry, and Jip was the dog. He would sit there, poor thing, and he would say Alice, I'd say Alice, he'd say Jerry, I'd say Jerry, he'd say Jip, and I'd say Jip, and so then it would be my turn to read. So you turn the page, Alice, Jerry and I come to the dog and I could not get Jip. He'd be very patient for a little bit. And so Jip, J-I-P, Jip, okay, I got it. I'm gonna get it this next time. So we'd start from the beginning and we get there. And it was like this total block. I could not read the word Jip. You know, with that story, I think what comes out of it is we were determined. My parents, I mean, there was never a doubt that I was gonna go to college. They tried to send me in another direction. I mean, my mom called the school and said, she's going, you know, she's gonna go to LSU and she's gonna get her teaching degree. And overcoming such challenges is one of the reasons that Cheryl Araby is a compassionate, determined, and effective educator. If you want something bad enough, you can obtain it. And the journey and how you get there is what you will draw from. And for 17 years, Cheryl Araby did just that. She taught in Baton Rouge, even in Okinawa, and then settled in at Mandeville Middle School as a fourth grade teacher. I always knew I wanted to be a teacher from the very beginning. I always wanted to, to help and to help others and to be a part of that learning process. She was all about the kids. She always, as I said, taught with hands-on and got in the middle of the lesson with them. Mandeville Middle had a true sense of family with the teachers, with administration, and I had never considered going for a higher degree. But there was that sense that, you know, there's something more out there. So that's when I got my master's, but I got my master's in elementary teaching. It was not in leadership because I had no desire 
to leave the classroom. I had an incredible mentor, Gail Sloan, who saw something in me that I never saw in myself, and that was to become a leader outside of the classroom. It took a big kick to get me out of there. In spite of her desire to simply stay in the classroom, her feeling of there being something more out there started her journey as an educational leader. She became assistant principal at Mandeville Middle, then continuing to rise in the ranks, became the principal of the brand new Lake Harbor Middle School. I've always continued to call up my school. I think opening a new school when you're actually giving it its name, you're picking its colors, you're designing placement, and it, it's your school. Of course, I never thought I wanted to leave Mandeville Middle. So that was even a big decision to think, wow, could I actually be principal? And then could I be principal of a brand new school? Cheryl established a warm and positive culture here at Lake Harbor. And um, she always had high expectations of students and teachers and herself. After four years at Lake Harbor, she moved up in the ranks of leadership again when she became the data supervisor for the parish. And I think at the district level, uh, that opportunity for data supervisor is, was just what I saw as maybe an opportunity for me to help others in other schools. She was always all about the data. She's always look at the data. and She looks at her data and uh, doesn't make a lot of false statements that way. Cheryl's unique ability to not only understand data, but to write curriculum made her the perfect choice when the position for assistant superintendent of curriculum and instruction became available in the school district. I thank Trey for giving me that opportunity to serve our school system and overseeing the money. As a leader, he made a good decision. I am surrounded by very special, intelligent, content knowledge supervisors. They are by far um, just incredibly important people to me. But we all are about the same thing. What do we want to do? What's best for the kids in St. Tammany Parish? Along with that, her keen sense of numbers and working with data meant that she could also lead the district's finances. You don't see many times where you have assistant superintendent of curriculum instruction that also has the finance piece. We don't want to negatively impact the classroom, the instruction in the classroom, the teacher. And I think that Cheryl's touch of having the curriculum piece and the finance allowed us to do that. Cheryl's role as assistant superintendent thrust her in a high profile demanding job and her ability to manage it effectively while meeting the demands of a large and close-knit family comes down to Cheryl's razor sharp and keen sense of organization that can be represented by one thing and one thing only her notebook she has a notebook with her at all times and just so that she won't forget anything she writes it down in her little notebook and we'll say we'll put it in your notebook or she'll pull it out and she said oh I have that in my notebook and she pulls it out and ticks it off and she knows oh I know where that is no it was before this and, um, and everything that she needs is right there in her notebook. Cheryl always does have a, have a notebook with her. She always had a notebook with her as administrator. And she has taught myself and I've taught others now to always have a notebook. That notebook goes everywhere with her. And I, you know, I've tried to steal it a few times to see if I can see what's in it. But she's got it under lock and key. But the notebook is just her way of keeping everything organized. So in spite of never wanting to leave the classroom, Cheryl Araby responded to those that saw her enormous potential and moved up through the ranks. And through her lens of always being a classroom teacher, she made a tremendous difference, not only for the entire school district, but in the hearts and minds of thousands of children. When I'm thinking about being back in the classroom, even though I'm in this chair, it's like it's all the classrooms in St. Tammany Parish. If you have the feeling in the heart that you're helping children, that's what keeps me going. She truly believed in the power of education, um, the, the curriculum. She wanted it to be strong, and she's worked very hard to give us a very good A foundation. I think the way that she works with people, her honesty, her fairness, I think all of those are gonna be her legacy. I think the legacy is that we've had a solid 
solid curriculum, you know, with her and overseeing it. My mom's legacy um, as a mother was that she brought up all four of us, all four of her children, to, um, to grow up using each of our talents individually and um, that we're not all the same, but she knew how to um, to parent us and to encourage us in the different ways that we that we use our talents. Her triumphs through her weaknesses are incredibly inspiring, regardless of her being a mother, really. She's an absolute career woman. I'm gonna cry, sorry. Coming into that floor of, of the school board is just always a delight when I come into town. It's like the one thing I wanna go do. I wanna get a PJs and I wanna go to the school board because I wanna walk into that that floor and I want to see all those women just doing their thing and, and looking great doing it, really. I'm so proud of my mom, Cheryl Araby, and the impact that she has made on the school system. Um, I feel like we're losing a, a, an amazing, amazing professional and I just know that she's, we're going to move forward in this next stage of her life with retirement and she's just going to have an amazing time with my dad. I am excited for her to drink coffee for as long as she wants in the morning. Because if that's one thing we have in common, we like to drink our coffee and have our moments with nothing else going on. I think it's gonna be great for Cheryl to be with her family. I know she wants to be with her mom and she loves those grandkids, you know. So I, I think it's gonna be a great, a great situation for her. I wish her the very best. Well, I'll miss her tremendously um, in many different ways, both professionally and personally. And, um, but I'm happy for her. Um, she has her health. She's got great family. She's got a lot of things that she wants to do. So, you know, I guess I could be selfish and wish, wish that she would work with us forever. But I'm also really extremely happy for her and the opportunities that she has moving forward in the rest of her life. I'll have to continue with my notebook because I had a notebook, I think, even before I was a teacher. Yes, I'll continue with the notebook, but it's going to look a little different. I think it's going to have uh, more things that will be family focused. I think it will have, um, hopefully, you know, just more fun things trips, that kind of thing, so, but yes, I'll always have a notebook. Although Mrs. Araby will certainly be missed, we wish her the very best as she moves on to a new and exciting chapter of her life. Let's also take a moment to congratulate Dr. Regina Sanford on her selection as the new Assistant Superintendent of Curriculum and Instruction. Dr. Sanford was a CNI supervisor and former administrator and classroom teacher before moving into this new position. Let's watch now as she was welcomed into the new position at a recent school board meeting. To all of St. Tammany Parish employees, I am very proud to be a member of this excellent professional and caring staff who puts children first. My three goals will be to ensure a solid foundation in literacy for all students in those early grades, increase exposure to STEM and fine arts skills during those middle school years. You all know me as the STEM lady and our nation is dependent upon future generations who will create, invent, and discover. And lastly, preparation for college and career readiness before exiting high school. To all of these, I pledge my work. But most importantly, to the students of St. Tammany Parish, we are dedicated to providing you with the educational experiences necessary to achieve your dreams. Thank you. The district is looking forward to working with Dr. Sanford in her new capacity. Let's now congratulate some very special teachers who each earned the title Parish Teacher of the Year. Valerie and Cyprian, Lancaster Elementary, Little Oak Middle School teacher Robin Day, and Cheryl Williams, teacher at Mandeville High School. Channel 13 stopped by their classrooms to see what makes these teachers so special. I want you guys to share out some of your explanations and some of the strategies that you used, okay? Valerie Cyprian, selected as this year's Parish Elementary Teacher of the Year while teaching second grade at Madisonville Elementary, is now teaching third grade at Lancaster. 
regardless of where she teaches, her love for teaching and her keen ability to teach is what stands out for current principal Susanna Welch. One of her specialties is that she really does take time to assess and get to know her kids on a very personal and academic level. And then she can scaffold her lesson so that she makes sure she's accommodating for all the different levels and types of learners in her classroom. It's a great way to quickly assess their understanding when they come up with their own questions. It gives me um, an idea that they are really thinking beyond what I'm even teaching, kind of thinking outside the box. It's Ms. Cyprian's passion for her teaching and her passion for her students that has impressed me the most out of any teacher I've ever met. And because of this, I'm so proud that she is our Teacher of the Year for both MES and for St. Tammany Parish. She's worked very hard to achieve everything that she has in her career. Welch is the first to point out the dynamic qualities of her third grade teacher. She's a team player. Um, she's very personal, very professional. What does this three represent? She goes out of her way not only to help her students, her parents, but the staff members here as well. She's on board with everything and I just love that. It's a great, great, great honor. An honor that this elementary parish teacher of the year is truly grateful to accept for a job she loves to do. I'm not a competitive person. This is not even something that I even think about. Um, but I love to teach, and I know that I'm pretty proud and blessed to be able to come and do something that I love to do every day. Boys and girls, when we're solving a word problem, what is She's a very modest person. She's a fabulous teacher, uh, and we try to make sure she knows that on a regular basis. But she's very creative. Uh, she puts a personal touch, and she's very professional. So would that be a larger number or a smaller number? Good. Melody Swang, Channel 13. feedback to your buddies. We talked about point of view. You guys are going to actually do a... Confucius said, wherever you go, go with all your heart. Robin Day knows this to be true. Okay. When I walked through those doors, um, I fell in love. I fell in love with the students. I fell in love with the faculty, the staff, and Little Oak community. And I fell in love with fourth grade. Yeah, that's okay. Although Day's career choice here. almost got derailed in college. I was in business. My father told me he would not pay for me to go to college if I was going to be a teacher. And then you're going to tell what really happened in the well, story. I really wanted to be and a teacher, so I majored in education and didn't tell him until my junior year. And um, he was very proud. You know, he, he, was, he was okay with it after that because um, I guess he realized that something I really wanted to do if I went to that extreme fanboys, for and, nor, but, or, yet, or so. And apparently this educator is good at it. She's conscientious of what she does. Um, she's very, very dedicated. One of the last people here um, in the afternoon and one of the first to arrive. Um, she's very caring, very concerned about her students, um, very reliable. Anything that you give her to do, she'll do a very, um, very, very good job. She'll do it well. Accolades not only from her principal, but from a parent, too. I know that Miss Day is very compassionate and cares deeply about her students. She taught my two daughters, and I could see that you know, when she taught them and, and their attitude towards her, they know that she really cares about them. And she just goes way above and beyond what a teacher needs to do for her students. Going the extra distance easily translates into being named the school district's middle school teacher of the year and a state finalist. I couldn't believe it. I was speechless. Um, very proud and very honored um, and, and very excited. But um, nonetheless, I was speechless. Silent or not, this educator has truly found a home at Little Oak Middle School. I still love it after 32 years. I don't feel like it's a job. It's, it's just something I enjoy doing that I get to come and do every day. And, and I, I absolutely love the children. They are what makes my day every day. Leading us back to Confucius, who also said, choose a job you love and you will never work a day in your life. Tiger Edwards, Channel 13. Did you guys pick up your bell ringer? No, I didn't. Okay, we need to get started, okay? Before Cheryl Williams became a teacher, she was a scientist. I was actually working at Stennis Space Center. I worked for the Department of the Navy, and um, I worked for Naval Research Labs. Someone it intervened to change that. Okay. Honestly, it, it came upon me by accident. I had not even really been thinking in that direction. I had a really good friend who I'd been on a mission trip with, and just the time that she had spent with me, she told me that she thought I would be a fantastic teacher. 
Who remembers that enzyme? Apparently her friend was right. Okay, say it, Gabby. Miss Williams is an outstanding teacher. Uh, she is very conscientious. Uh, I would say as far as quality, she's very organized, uh, teaching science and uh, labs. Uh, she has to be very organized. She's very caring. Uh, she cares about her students and their performance. And this scientist, now teacher, knows how to challenge her students. Miss Williams uh, has her students investigating things uh, on a daily basis. And so I think, yeah, her past work history leads her to that. She knows how important those hands-on activities are for her students. When I do hands-on experiments, they want to do it. They're ready to dig in. They're ready to get after it. They like to do those things. So I think it's vitally important. And so I work it in as much as I can because that's when the real learning happens for most of them. Teaching and learning is an educational fusion in Cheryl Williams's scientific laboratory. One reason why she is the school district's high school teacher of the year. I was very happy for Miss Williams. I can't say that I was surprised because uh, she is such a hard worker. Uh, she does such a great job in the classroom. It is an overwhelming thought and humbling at the same time because I never would have I never would have thought that 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 could happen for me. So yeah I'm very pleased but um, it's still sinking in. Disbelief aside, the true soul of this educator shines through at night. The last thing I think about when I lay down at night after I'm thinking of my family is my students and what am I going to do for them tomorrow. Tiger Edwards, Channel 13. Special congratulations goes out to Robin Day, who was also selected as a state regional winner. We'd also like to congratulate three award-winning principals of the year. These three dedicated principals were all selected as parish principals of the year. Gary Marlboro, Shataima Elementary, Patrick Mackin, Slidell Junior High, and Johnny Vetrano, Fountain Blue High School principal. Let's take a look at these three award-winning administrators. <laughs> Shata Ima means of the Choctaw and was the name given to Father Adrian Roquette, who spent years ministering to the people of Lacombe. Hey ladies, what are y'all working on today? Much like Roquette, St. Tammany Parish Elementary Principal of the Year Gary Marlboro dedicates his time to the children of this area as well. The principal is always a very valuable part of the school. The leader of the school sets the pace and the tone for the school. But Mr. Marlboro has gone above and beyond what just you, when you think of a principal. His heart is truly in it for the children of Shataima. I have a sign on my desk here that says 24-7-365. It truly is a 24-7, 365 job. Um, it, you know, I leave, but I don't leave work. Mr. Marlboro, like many other superlative principals, both welcomes the recognition and immediately passes it on to the teachers and the school. I think the parents deserve and the students deserve, you know, to know that their kids are going to a quality, quality school with a great leadership and a great group of teachers. Mr. Marlboro is an extremely humble man, and he comes to our school and with a style and a grace that, you know, it, it just makes all of us want to work harder. The children are still the top priority for this longtime teacher. A school of tremendously beautiful children. Um, th that's really what we do it for. I just finished an observation in the classroom and just really enjoy just spending time with the kids, talking to the kids. If anything, the children can't wait to show what they've learned, show what they know, show what they're working on. When I feel like I need to reconnect, when I need to re-energize, I just go find the classroom. And just like the school's namesake, Principal Gary Marlboro has endeared himself to the Lacombe community and they, in turn, have accepted him as one of their own. Good morning, Ms. Kuzan. How's it going? That really sends a big message wow. to the community that he's here, he's here to stay, doing? he's here to do the best that he can for the kids. I didn't realize what a small town feel this had. This is such a hidden jewel in St. Tammany Parish. It's a fantastic school. Rhett Sharp, Channel 13. In the Slidell Junior High Den, Patrick Mackin is the big cat. A leader noticeably on the job every day. Mr. Mackin is very visible. He is everywhere in the school. From morning duty to lunch duty to the hallways, he's in the classroom constantly. It develops a very positive relationship and an atmosphere in the school. And it 
spread. Good morning, guys, and welcome to your brand new Tiger family. I'm really glad to have you. A program instituted by Mackin called Tiger Family also provides opportunities for affirmative interactions between teachers and students. Tiger Families is, is just an opportunity for every student to have at least one adult who's really focused on them and, and their academic progress, their behavior. What we wanted them to basically have was an advocate, someone they felt comfortable they could come to if they had a problem. And the cubs in the Tiger Family are blossoming from it. We've seen improvement in academics, our relationship with the students, behavior has improved tremendously. Being attentive to his teachers is also a fundamental tenet of this man's leadership style. His relationship with the faculty to me is one of his biggest strengths. He will talk to all of us, he will get all of our opinions on it, and that I respect tremendously. His support of students and teachers at Slidell Junior High is what makes Mr. Mackin the Louisiana Middle Junior High Principal of the Year. Well, yeah, you're right. I was just happy to be there. I mean, being a finalist, one of the 10 finalists is a great honor uh, for the school and, and for me, of course. So I kind of went in there with that attitude and he said, uh, middle school, Louisiana Principal of the Year, Patrick Mackin, just to hear my name called was, was great. I got to... Uh, shake Mr. Fulce's hand and go up there and, and represent St. Tammany Parish. While collecting the award, Mr. Mackin was quick to point out that he shared it with the rest of his Tigers at school. You know, this award is the Principal of the Year Award, so of course it's in my name, but um, this is truly a, a team award. I mean, so many teachers and other staff members at this school that do so much for our students, and those people are the reason why I love this job so much. You get to come in here every day and work with such a, an awesome team that, that really cares about kids. And so does the big cat. Mr. Mackin genuinely loves the students. He wants what's best for them. He wants to help them succeed. It has been said that the markings on the forehead of a tiger represent the Chinese symbol for king. Patrick Mackin is the king of Slidell Jr. and the state of Louisiana. All right, guys, it's time to tiger up! Tiger Edwards, Channel 13. Well, I, I am very pleased. It, it is an honor. Uh, although the recognition ought to go to my teachers, my students, because they're the ones who are performing. I'm just another guy sitting in a big chair, that's all. Although Johnny Vetrano thinks there is nothing special about what he does as principal of Fountain Blue High School, when it comes to being a great principal, his teachers think otherwise. I think he's vibrant. <laughs> he's got a huge personality, uh, takes up the room. Oh, he's really great. Um, he's, he's very intelligent, so he's a very quick thinker. So when you come to him for problems, he's a great problem solver. And this ability to offer solutions to teachers, students, and parents is one key to Vetrano's success. I want to solve their little problem, whatever barriers that's in their way. If I can remove that, then the teacher's job is easier, the student has a little more of hope about being successful. And I put the parents' mind at ease that we're gonna do whatever we can, I mean, to our ability to, to, to solve that problem. Really responds to our needs. Uh, he listens in, in that regard. He's, he's a fixer. I like the fact that I come in here and I can see those, uh, those energetic minds and those enthusiastic kids, and I can help direct them and kind of solve some of the issues that they have so they're able to learn. And he's, he's great with the students. Um, he engages with them. He, he even serves lunch during the lunchtime to help them to go ahead and be able to, to get meals a little bit faster so they don't have to spend their whole time waiting in line. As you can see, Johnny Vetrano is a hardworking principal who truly cares about his students. I mean, I know that he fights for these kids. He wants everyone across the finish line at the end. He respects the parents and the teachers, and he communicates well with them and openly with them. And um, he's just, he's a huge team player. He wants everyone on the team. He wants everyone playing all the time. Vibrant, intelligent, compassionate, quick thinking, and a problem solver who believes in teamwork. All qualities that make Johnny Vetrano this year's Parish High School Principal of the Year. Melody Swang, Channel 13. We'd like to acknowledge Slidell Junior High Principal Patrick Mackin, who went on to earn the coveted title, Louisiana Junior High School Principal of the Year. 
For several years now, the ProStart Culinary class at Lakeshore High School has been perfecting their skills and working with some of the best chefs in Louisiana. And recently, the hard work paid off when they earned a trip to the ProStart Nationals in Minnesota. Rhett Sharp went to the Lakeshore ProStart kitchen to see firsthand how they did it. The cuisine in South Louisiana ranks among the world's best, so it should come as no surprise when the culinary class at Lakeshore High School recently put their skills to the test at the Louisiana Seafood Pro Start Invitational and came up with a winning recipe that catapulted them onto a national stage. We just could not wait to get there. We were in pins and needles. We finally got to that location and everything just flowed. The kids did fantastic. That was crazy. So we were sitting there and we were in the front row and they wanted to drag it on and make it very, very anticipated. So we were all kind of shaken and nervous and excited. And then we just hear L and everybody just like jumps up and we're all screaming and crying. And it was just a really awesome emotional moment for everybody. After winning the state competition, Miss Ackery and the Lakeshore team set their sights on the national competition in Minneapolis. Bringing equipment and food down to the convention center was one thing, but shipping boxes across the country is another thing. Avocado salad, shrimp and grits, and a black and gold dessert were the specials of the day, and the team started cooking. There were a lot of cameras. It was, uh, it was definitely a lot of pressure, and you could feel it. You could, everybody could feel it. People shaking and stuff. Doing, uh, but we were, like I said, we were pretty confident, and uh, we felt good going into it. You're in there, and you want to be focused all the time, and. You're constantly thinking about, okay, well, what can I make sure that we can do last minute to make sure that ours is the best and that we win? With 30 seconds to go, Team Louisiana is going to beat the clock. Let's watch you do it, guys. After 60 minutes, the ovens were turned off, the spatulas were put away, and the Lakeshore lineup from Louisiana waited for the results. There were approximately, I think, 46 teams total, and we came in um, 18th of the 46, very respectable 18th. Um, for our first time there, we were very proud and pleased. And while the recognition is sweet, there is also another very important educational aspect that relates to that level of success. Each student came away with $60,000 worth of scholarship money to culinary schools all over the nation. This is the real deal. I mean, it's not an easy career path. It's not something that you can just go do as a hobby. This helps you prepare and see how much hard work it is, but then it also, it pays off. And we got scholarships through it, so then that helps with culinary school too, and I do plan on opening a restaurant. ProStart's an awesome program. It definitely teaches the fundamentals of cooking, everything about food that you really want to know, and um, lots of good recipes. It's just awesome. I'd recommend it to anyone. We do hands-on things every day. It's so important to me to have these kids in the kitchen. The success comes from that, I think, and having a positive attitude and being ourselves. Um, we are casual in here, but yet we get the job done. It's a wonderful place to be. I'm a very lucky person. From the award-winning Pro Start Kitchen here at Lakeshore High School, I'm Rhett Sharp, Channel 13. This looks really good, y'all. Thanks. Miss Ackery and her ProStart team say they are working on an even better menu for next year's competition and are aiming for the top spot in 2015. Let's now head over to the prep zone so Tiger Edwards can update us on what's been going on in prep sports. Tiger, I know prep zone has been covering lots of sports and sports stories. What do you have for us today? Thank you, Melody. You have entered the prep zone for your prep zone minute. While there might be disagreements about who was number one out on the football field this past season, across the district it is clear that all of our teams are together when it comes to representing our school system to the best of their ability. This year, each player's helmet is adorned with the St. Tammany Parish Public School logo, signifying they are student athletes from our district. Mr. Foles and the school board are urging sportsmanship to coaches, players, parents, fans, and anyone who attends games in St. Tammany. To that end, the home team announcer will read a statement like this one read before the Covington versus West Monroe playoff football game. Good afternoon. On behalf of the St. Tammany Parish School Board members, Superintendent Trey Foles, Principal Rosalind Hanson, Myself, Darrell Graham, Athletic Director, 
Welcome to Covington High School and tonight's contest between Covington High School and West Monroe High School. High school athletics, including games like this one tonight, teach life, lifetime lessons, values, and respect, not only for the game, but for those who play it, who coach it, and watch it. Our school system and Covington High School promote the highest levels of sportsmanship. We know that the lessons that learned here extend beyond the playing field and into the classroom and our daily lives. As fans of your team's school, we ask that you set examples of respect and sportsmanship by supporting all participants and officials in a positive manner. Thank you, good luck, and safe travels. Speaking of football, five of our eight teams made the playoffs, with the Covington Lions making it for the 39th time. The Slidell Tigers made it for the 28th time. The Found Blue Bulldogs for the ninth time. The Lakeshore Titans for the third time in their existence. And the Mandeville Skippers gained their 20th playoff spot. That's nine in a row for the Skippers under Coach Guy Lacombe. And they went the furthest of all teams, making it to the quarterfinals. Meanwhile, out on the volleyball court, seven of our eight girls teams made the playoffs with the Fountain Blue Lady Bulldogs and the Lakeshore Lady Titans making it all the way to the state tournament. All of this made for a very successful first half of the prep zone season for our schools. Stay with us in the prep zone for the second half of our season where we are out on the court and on the fields covering your team. And look for the Mandeville boys soccer team and the Salmon Lady Spartans basketball team to make long runs in the playoffs. Back to you, Melody. Thanks, Tiger. And as always, we look forward to more news coming out of the prep zone. Our Channel 13 interns have been busy as well. This new group of students has been working hard, producing some great stories. Interns this year are Peyton Iboss and Emily Russell from Mandeville High School, Andrew Fontenot, Jennifer Bellot, and John Satori, all from Lakeshore High, and North Shore High student Emma Landesh. And Emma is on the set and ready to share with us some of their work. Emma? Thanks, Dr. Swing. Now let's see what the interns here have been up to. Emily Russell brings us our first piece about the District Teacher of the Year luncheon, where the top teachers from each school were given special recognition. The St. Tammany Parish Public School System honored 56 of its finest teachers at the Teacher of the Year luncheon held at the Treen Technology Center. They get recognized at their school, but it's nice for them to come here in front of their peers, board members and others, and just have a little break in the action, if you will, and to, for us to thank them as a group for all they do. The luncheon recognized the teachers for their hard work and dedication. I've been teaching for 31 years, and this is just such an awesome honor to be recognized in this way. It's such a privilege for me to be in St. Tammany Parish, and an honor that I was selected as Teacher of the Year. So this is amazing. I will never forget this. Superintendent Trey Fulce stressed that there's more to a teacher's job than just letter grades and test scores. No matter what the discussion is, at the end of the day, when you shut the door, it's all about the teacher in the classroom. I treat my students as I would my own children, and I try to work hard to prepare engaging lessons for them. I think it is important to teach them academically, but we also have to teach the whole child. I want them to come to class and know that they're safe, they're loved, and I will give them 110% every day. The teachers were also reminded of their role in ensuring the success of every student. Our responsibility, our privilege, is to have the opportunity to teach every child every day. A motto the St. Tammany Parish Public School System firmly believes in. Emily Russell, Channel 13 intern. Next, Abney Elementary celebrates 50 years of excellence in education on the south side of Slidell. Peyton Iboss has the story. This year, Abney Elementary celebrated 50 years of education. Teachers, students, and alumni gathered in the school's gym to celebrate the exciting event. It's very exciting for me, very rewarding for me, uh, just to see this celebration take place and to, and to really think about everything that's happened over the last 50 years and to have the opportunity to celebrate it. It's touched a lot of lives through the 50 years and to see so many come back and then to see their relatives come back and will make, still be a part of the school, it says a lot about the history of the school. Abney Elementary takes pride in its former students and teachers. 
In fact, many are active citizens in the community and still contribute to the school's success. You know, what's really significant is if you look around this room at the people that were here today, that were actually went to school at Abney Elementary, uh, for a small South Slidell school, it's really produced a lot of leaders in the community. And that, that really says a lot about the foundation that this school built for all of us and a foundation of uh, loving to learn. What impresses me the most are the people involved here, which is always what makes it important. It's a wonderful celebration. It really, sitting there, it brought back so many memories of when I was a little girl and, um, and, and going to Abney, walking to school every day with my friends, um, feeling that I was really part, really, truthfully, part of a family, the Abney family. And in these 50 years, the Abney family has continued to grow and expand its facility in order to provide a state-of-the-art school for all its students. I look at what's going on with students today and uh, uh, it's just unbelievable. It's a wonderful school and it's a wonderful asset to Slidell as a whole. I sure, sure see Abney being here another 50 years. You know, it's entrenched in the community. It's part of the community. So I, I see the school being here, continuing its legacy, and continuing to uh, send young students off into the future. A goal Abney Elementary has met for the past 50 years. Peyton Ibos, Channel 13 intern. Emily Russell also produced a piece on Mandeville High's Youth and Government Program, which adds a fun twist to the traditional debate club. Mandeville High School's popular debate club, Youth in Government, attracts students of all ages and with various interests. Members of the club partake in eclectic debate by presenting and authoring their own bills based on personal research. We meet on a weekly basis, which is unusual for a club, for a debate club like ours. Um, and as a result of building it over a period of several years, we actually attract a diverse group of, of um, a students. Using real world events, the club debates around a serious bills. These students proposed a bill on lowering corporate tax rates to increase employment. Now is the time to draw domestic and foreign investments to U.S. businesses. The Federal Reserve continues to keep its interest rates in the U.S. very low, um, around 5%. I think it's really important that we discuss serious topics, that way people become more aware of current world events. The club functions as any standard debate club would. However, its use of parliamentary procedure creates a uniquely formal structure. It doesn't allow you to be overpowered by just the loudest kids in the club. You're always going to have to deal with the outside world of rules and government and laws at some point. And you're going to need to know how to formally and professionally handle this. And I think parliamentary procedure really helps um, students understand that. One of the things that parliamentary procedure does is that it gives a structure within which kids can cooperate. So uh, kids learn here that um, they can debate in a respectable way and disagree on issues. On a lighter note, students are given the opportunity to present a fictional bill of choice. At this meeting, members propose changing the color of stop signs from red to purple. We are combining two of the American colors, red and blue, and we are making purple. Our format is that we debate not only serious bills that take into account all kinds of issues, but also funny bills. It gives students the opportunity to be clever. I really thought it was going to be serious and kind of boring, but when I started coming, it was still structural and uh, it wasn't chaotic or anything like that, but it was really fun because people still made jokes and it was a wide range of students who came. You got to bring in the new people and Funny Bills do a great job of doing that. They're incredibly entertaining. While joining in on captivating debates, youth and government provides experience that can be applied far beyond the podium. It has taught me how to become more aware of worldly events and why they're important and why we should be paying attention because eventually we're going to be old enough to change them ourselves. It really helps you prepared for life after high school and life in a community in college after that you know in the workplace because it allows you to grow as a person. You think government grows tremendous citizens, citizens who are proactive. Being aware of what's going on around you and having a voice about it in your community is really what being a good responsible citizen is all about. A principal Mandeville High School's youth in government thrives upon. Emily Russell, Channel 13 intern. That's it from the Channel 13 interns. Back to you, Dr. Swang. Thanks, Emma. We look forward to hearing more from you and our other interns in our next show. 
Both sides of the parish joined forces recently to showcase the power of Jobs After Graduation, or JAG, program as students from Fountain Blue High School visited Salmon High to listen to important life lessons from prominent community members and participate in life skills that extend way past the classroom. Rhett Sharp was on hand for the event. When you make the right decision, you will have a positive outcome. A little encouragement goes a long way, and that is exactly what the Jobs After Graduation program ensures every day for high school students in St. Tammany Parish. Students from Fountain Blue and Salmon High recently joined together to listen and learn about life skills together. Jobs for America's Graduates has been around since 1988. It is an intervention program that is designed to identify students that have barriers to success and help them overcome them. One of the things that JAG has, has learned over the years is that these students can learn from people that have had the experiences. And we have a lot of guest speakers in our program. So Mr. Uh, Richard, uh, Mr. Victor Richard III, who spoke first, uh, CEO of Nord, great story, self-made man, proves that you can get it if you go out and do it yourself. Don't wait for somebody else to give it to you. I'm a product of what I shared with them, and um, they deserve to have the opportunity to succeed and uh, they deserve to have the right to make the decision to succeed. After listening to a guest speaker talk about what it takes to succeed in life, the students had the opportunity to participate in activities that put their communication skills to the test. The idea is to give them some kind of challenge that they have to work together to solve. It's a problem-solving technique. Communication is involved. If they can figure out how to work together, and that's a skill that employers are looking for that will make them successful in their life. In order to solve this challenge, students had to think outside the box and outside their comfort zone. It's a leadership training where you're put into a group and you're given a problem to solve that can't be solved individually. And so they are forced to talk, communicate, listen, and, and problem solve in a very short period of time. We, we try to create the illusion of pressure and, and make it happen, make it fun for them. We had three different teams, and uh, two of them worked together pretty well. They kept trying, and one of them near the end got close. The third team that was actually least successful, I heard one member of that team actually state, I think if we did this, we could do it. She had the answer, but she couldn't get the rest of the team to cooperate. At the end of the day, the students are the loudest proponents of the program. Listening to like guest speakers, you learn life experiences, you learn um, how they overcame it and how you can incorporate it into your life. In the little teamwork activities, it's just in the future you're always going to have to work with people no matter what you're doing. So you always you need to learn teamwork and how to communicate with other people. I really think that this program will get you through a lot in life, just through if you need help with, you know, college things and school things and everything, it'll help you a lot. It'll make you understand what you didn't understand before you got into the program. By focusing on the present and aided by the encouragement and dedication of Mr. Boren and Mr. Dubasan, the students in the JAG program are given every opportunity to understand what it takes to succeed in the future. Rhett Sharp, Channel 13. Hey, give a line. Give a line. After the day-long event, the JAG students had the opportunity to reflect on what they learned and gave feedback that will help shape future events. Chevron officials and members of the New Orleans Saints were at Brock Elementary School to make a presentation of classroom materials to kindergarten teacher Callie Sheremy. Channel 13's Tiger Edwards was there for the delivery of supplies. Good morning. Good morning. How are you all doing today? Chevron, through its Fuel Your School program, provides teachers with resources to support teaching and learning. Chevron's Fuel Your School program is an innovative collaboration with Donors Choose where teachers can go online, they can post projects, and Chevron funds those projects. An initiative born out of Chevron's educational vision. Chevron believes that effective education, including science, technology, engineering, and math, are critical um, subjects in order to help fuel the next generation of scientists, engineers, 
doctors and lawyers. And people recognize the importance of this community partner. Chevron's a great community partner with us in so many ways, not just giving of monies, not just equipment, but they give personnel. They have people that are in our schools on a daily basis working with our students. Thank God we have groups like Chevron that are there to give, you know, the, the teaching tools that are, that are necessary um, to teach, you know, kids in, in as many different ways as possible. Chevron's Fuel Your School is cool. Look what Miss Sheremy got, an instant learning center. Wonder what she'll use that for. I'll teach a lesson, and then after I teach my lesson, the kids will break off into their centers, and they'll have the materials there in their centers. They have a chance to practice the skills that we have previously learned. And there is an added benefit to using these resources. I think it's really going to make learning fun for them and make them want to learn. All right. We got the uh, counting box here, the candy going. We were doing counting games and we were having fun and just to see the smile on the face, brand new first year teacher, the enthusiasm, the excitement she has, uh, it's just a really nice day. And along to join in the fun were some recognizable professional athletes. Now, I'm a huge Saints fan, so to see Zach Street and then someone like Ricky Jackson who's in the Hall of Fame, both these guys give up their time to come and support education, public education in St. Tammany Parish. Very meaningful and very appreciative. St. Tammany Parish Public Schools, Chevron's Fuel Your School, and the New Orleans Saints, a winning combination. Tiger Edwards, Channel 13. Funding for the Fuel Your School program comes from monies generated when consumers go to the pump at either Chevron or Texaco stations. One dollar for every eight gallons purchased in the designated month added up to one half a million dollars to subsidize teacher projects in 10 parishes. Let's now head across the hall here at Channel 13 to where Red Sharp is standing by to share with us what's trending in the school system. Red? Thanks, Melody. Here's what's trending in and around our school system. Superintendent Trey Foles presented the Fountain Blue High School Jazz Ensemble One with a Celebrating Success Award at the latest principals meeting for the group being selected as one of the 12 finalists across the country to participate in the Swing Central Jazz Workshops and Competition at the Savannah Music Festival. Slidell Junior High's Green Academy students recently delivered fresh produce that they grew and harvested to the Mount Olive Feeding Ministry. Green Academy's purpose is to promote a sustainable lifestyle through gardening and recycling. Mount Olive Feeding Ministry serves approximately 350 meals a day to residents of Slidell. Yellowstone National Park Forest Ranger Allison Paul visited with Miss Bonnie Stokes and Mrs. Michelle Cassidy's fourth grade classes at Chifuncta Middle School. She discussed with the students the importance of protecting our nation's national resources for future generations. Fountain Blue Junior High students in Mr. Bobby King's Ag Science class assembled and installed new benches in an area that makes a nice spot for the students to socialize before school and during lunch. Honey Island Elementary second grader Kendall Remero was presented with a $1,000 check for Honey Island by DEA agent Terry Davis and Slidell Police Chief Randy Smith for winning the 2014 National Red Ribbon Photo Contest. Students at Lancaster Elementary School recently participated in a computer coding program called Hour of Code as part of a nationwide push to teach children computer science. The program helps nurture creativity and problem-solving skills while preparing students for a future career. Mandeville High senior Nick Rainey won the National Young Arts Cinematic Award for the second year in a row. He received $250 and is going to the organization's headquarters in Miami where he could win an additional scholarship and qualify for the Presidential Scholar Award. Superintendent Fulce also recently presented a check for $17,148 to representatives of the Children's Museum of St. Tammany at a school board meeting from funds raised for the annual Black and Gold Day. This is the fifth year the St. Tammany Parish Public School System has partnered with the Children's Museum and over $100,000 has now been raised through the fundraising efforts. And that's what's trending. Back to you in the studio, Mel. Thanks, Rhett. We'll check back with you during our next show. Rhett also stopped by the STAR Conference where an excited group of aspiring teachers are learning the skills they will need to be effective classroom teachers one day. Good morning. Hello. Hi, Hi. Hi. We're going to go ahead and get started. 
With a nationwide decrease in the number of college students going into the field of education, St. Tammany schools are joining forces and playing a vital role in developing young teachers at the sixth annual STAR Conference. The theme this year is teaching is my superpower and it's an opportunity for those kids who are participating in the STAR teaching and reaching program to come together and learn various aspects of the profession. The day-long conference is an opportunity for high school students who are interested in teaching from across the parish to meet one another, hold discussions, and get hands-on experience from current teachers around St. Tammany. And they learn things such as how to work applications on the computer, classroom management, um, and other topics related to teaching. For the prospective teachers, this conference is an invaluable tool and works to reinforce many of their initial thoughts about pursuing careers in teaching. I really liked having the different sessions and all of the like advice from the different teachers and just everything they can tell me. I like this idea because it allows me to really learn from other teachers and have their ideas. Several breakout sessions designed to expose students to diverse approaches to instruction became a highlight of the conference. I really enjoyed the one about engaging students mm -hmm. so I can learn how to engage my students when I become a teacher. The programs are growing. The teachers are doing an excellent job. As more students go through the program, they're beginning to be advocates to younger students about, about joining the program. The conference came to a close with guest speaker Patrick Mackin, the Louisiana High School Principal of the Year. Finally, I decided to go back to school to get certified to teach. And like, like the um, introduction said, one of the best decisions I ever made in my life. Information that just might turn these super students into super teachers. Yes, definitely wanting to grow our own. So that is the aim, that they would go through this program, go to college, come back, student teach with us, and then we can hire them as St. Tammany teachers. Rhett Sharp, Channel 13. Now in its sixth year, the STAR Conference continues to guide aspiring teachers, connect them with resources that can benefit them in the future, and as always, find ways to bring them back to St. Tammany after college. That's our show for today, and remember, you can watch our show in all kinds of ways. We're on Charter Channel 198 on the North Shore, AT&T U-verse Channel 99, both North and South Shore. To find our broadcast schedule, just go to stpsb.org and follow the link to Channel 13. From our website, you can also watch our shows on our Video On Demand page. And of course, we're on YouTube. Just search Channel 13 St. Tammany Schools. And finally, to keep up with the latest happenings in St. Tammany Parish Public Schools, like the district's Facebook page and follow us on Twitter. So thanks for watching this edition of Chalk Talk. We end our show today with a special performance by Fountain Blue High School's award-winning jazz band. Enjoy and take care. <laughs>